Okay, this is a good example of why you don't want to mess with an amp that's sounding perfectly fine. But then maybe you do. I don't know. I uh, was checking the bias on these tubes. This is the Super Reverb. I've got it completely apart. It took the chassis out. I uh, discharged the capacitors. And this is why I have the long cable that I showed you. Because I can still hook it up to the speakers and uh, have it sitting on a bench. But uh, what happened was I took the tubes out, I put them back in, and I was playing the amp, and all of a sudden it just kind of shut off and kind of thumped a little bit. And I go, oh, come on, don't do this. And played it a little more and it did the same thing so all I had done to is take the power tubes out so I thought maybe they weren't making good contact so I took them out sprayed some deoxid in there and put them back in and it seemed to work fine but I wanted to check because of what I've found in the past is uh, when you tension these retension these which you may have heard of that and I'll show you how to do it this is like a little toothpicker tool dental tool that I use it's really fine and it works good you just stick it in there and kind of push each contact in a little bit because they get loose depending on what type of tubes you put in there some tubes have bigger pins than others and they will uh, stretch these out a little bit so you just kind of run it down. There's three segments in each one. Run it down in there, each one, and just push them back in a little bit. They're kind of fragile. Uh, sometimes you just have to buy a new tube socket. These are getting pretty worn. But uh, what happens, and I've seen it on my Vibroverb, is you'll retention these things and then it makes the tube hard to get in. You have to be careful. You don't want to force it once you do this because you can't break these things. I, I had a broken socket where the pin had been shoved up through the bake light and it busted a whole chunk out of the tube socket. So you don't want to ever force your tubes in there, but when you're trying to, when you're working upside down, and that's what why I took it out because it's so much easier to look down on it. And you're trying to put tubes in there, you're going to generally want to force it until you break something. But what else can happen? And this is what I found. I had an amp that wasn't making good contact. That's why I took this one out to look at it. Is that you can smash these flimsy little contacts and they'll just flatten out in there so when you put your tube in it'll go in but it really isn't going inside it's just touching the smashed section of the contacts so it's the pins not really inside and you'll get a really intermittent connection that way you can bang on the amp and you'll hear it vibrate and you know well, what the what is going on? I mean, that's one thing about these old amps is they are like old cars. It's like trying to change the spark plugs and time your distributor and put a new distributor cap in. I don't know if any of you guys ever used to do that, but shoot, when we were kids, we had to keep our cars running. That's what these are like. So you just go through each one, tighten them up a little bit. But in the process, you know, I bought some new 12AT7 tubes. And I said, well, I'm going to check these things. And I put it over here. This is the phase inverter 12AT7. It's a USA-made black plate. It looks like a great tube. But when I did the uh, leakage test, you'll see here on position 1 and 2, the needle moves. That needle's never supposed to move. 
So I'm thinking, oh boy, maybe I found something here. I mean, the amp has been sounding great. I've been trying to get the other amp to sound like this one. So you just never know. And I'm not sure exactly yet. I, don't, I never throw away these tubes. I just make notes that, you know, have some leakage just in case they're still good. Either way, I've got the new tubes that I'm going to try. It tests strong in every other position. I mean, uh, but then when you go to look at this chart, which I've never completely figured out, this is the leakage test chart. I'm going to say my best bet is now I have a heater to cathode leak. Maybe in both halves. I'm not sure. There's one or two. But, I mean, they have X's all in position. These are the positions 1 through 6. 1 and 2 is where it moves. But there's all these other leakage paths here. And so it could be any of these as far as I know. And like I said, never figured that out. Anyway, good tubes don't have leakage, so I'm going to switch those out and we'll see what happens. But that's how you retension your sockets. Same thing on these little little ones. These are a little bit tighter. Don't really need much. These only have two segments. And uh, so you don't want to push them in too much because you can get them too tight. And they'll just stretch right back out again. But at least when you get them in there, I think you know, it'll make pretty good contact for a while. And then I always use deoxid to clean these things. That stuff's a miracle. D100. So that's it. Make sure those are good and uh, keep your tube pins clean and have good contact. Talk to you later.